You've added your target and source parts. You've checked the duct preferences, the system definitions, and MEP options. Now you're definitely ready to start adding duct work to the model. Duct layouts are actually fairly simple, as long as you have a basic knowledge of HVAC design. Duct represents the connecting geometry between targets and sources. And in AutoCAD MEP, it comes in rectangular, round, and oval shapes. Duct can be created as a single line or double line object as needed. But the big thing is to make sure you connect all of these objects together properly. In the upper part of the building shown, you'll see that several diffusers and a VAV box are already placed. We're going to add duct work to these items. Make sure you have the HVAC workspace set current. There are several ways to add duct. The first is to pick the duct tool from the ribbon, home tab, build panel. When you pick the tool here, you can choose between regular duct or flex duct. The second is to pick a duct tool from the palette. Some of these have predefined settings, such as the Supply Medium Pressure tool. Right-click on the tool and review the properties. Note that this tool only sets the system, but you can edit this and set any defaults that you want, such as the routing preference, the shape, the cut length, and more. Select OK to close the Properties dialog. One of the most common ways to add duct is simply to select the Add Duct Grip, which is indicated by a plus sign on an MV part. Pick the one on the right side of the VAV box. The rule about duct layout is this. Always check properties before you pick your second point of duct. That way you can make adjustments to any of the following properties. System sets the system definition. Select the binoculars icon on the right side of this line. This tool will open the Select a System tool. When the dialog appears, you are able to review system definitions that are available in a master drawing, which is defined on the Options command. You can also browse to other project drawings and templates as needed. Click OK to exit this dialog. From the Properties palette, click Supply. Routing Preference is set to Standard. We'll leave this one alone for now. The Shape feature controls the type of duct to be drawn. By default, this may already be set to Rectangular. It got this information, along with the size, from the MV part. Now you see why it's a good idea to set this early in the project. You can always come back to the Properties dialog to change duct sizes and shapes later. Flow Rate sets the flow coming into the VAV. Leave it at 1500 CFM for now. Specify Cut Length lets the program pre-cut the duct. This is a great tool for HVAC contractors, allowing them to have cut sheets generated automatically but we're going to leave this set to no. Elevation has been set by the center of the VAV box connector. If you change this elevation, the program will automatically create a riser, unless that option is turned off in duct preferences. Leave it as it is for now. Justify sets the control line for creating the duct. If you want to use eccentric reducers automatically, then route the duct by one of the edges. But for most layouts, leave this set to center. You can adjust justification later. The offsets are great for running parallel duct. Again, we'll leave these alone for now. Bend method sets whether you are using a traditional elbow, an offset, or a transition offset. When bend angle is set to user defined, the bends will follow any angle you use when laying out the duct. 
but you can set this to work in specific increments, such as 15 degrees, to help keep fabrication costs down. Lining and insulation thickness show graphically in some display representations. If you want to show insulation, set it here. You can also come back and add this later. Slope controls the angle measurement, while the branch fittings set your first preference. Choose between T or takeoff. Pick takeoff for now. The terminal to duct connection sets the last segment to an air terminal or other device. Set this to flexible to draw a flex duct for now. Extended duct works with duct that is straight over the top of air terminals, so save this one for later. Finally, go to fitting settings. This sets what the default fittings are for duct layout, which are automatically added to a run. Review these settings. When you get to the rectangular duct section, set the reducing elbow to be rectangular duct reducing elbow. Select OK to continue. Next, add the main duct line down the corridor. Put in a 20 foot section first. Then go back to the properties palette and change the shape to round and size to 14 inches. You'll get prompted to pick a transition. So stick with the first pick for the 30 degree round transition. Put in another 20 foot section. After this, change the size to 12 inch round and then pick the 30 degree angle fitting. Run a 12 foot section and then turn up between the air terminals. The last leg is 24 feet. Press enter to complete the run. To create a branch, select the duct tool from the ribbon. Note that the last values used remain in the tab. Set the diameter to 8 inches. But before you create the duct, go to O snap settings and turn off the AutoCAD snaps. Leave the MEP snaps turned on. Pick a point near the end of the duct. Add a short leg for the branch and then check properties to make sure the terminal duct connection is set to flexible. Pick the connector on top of the air terminal. When prompted about a connection, choose Accept. Be aware that sometimes you may get several options, so scroll through these if they appear to see what options you have. Continue to connect the air terminals and main ducts together. This works well as long as you've got enough room to create the fittings. The main and the branches start out from the same elevation, and the main and the air terminals have enough vertical room to place fittings. Don't forget to keep your eyes on the properties palette when routing duct, and take your time.